My name is Dixon. I am a psychiatrist. I live and work in Zimbabwe, where I spend pretty much most of my time interacting with grandmothers who are breaking the wall of depression. <coughs> with hundreds of grandmothers like Murania, we are bringing evidence-based therapy to thousands of people in communities in Zimbabwe and beyond. You know, the World Health Organization tells us that depression is now the leading cause of disability globally, with over 300 million people affected. Furthermore, every 40 seconds, someone dies from suicide. In fact, suicide is now the leading cause of death amongst young people. And in a world where technology influences the way we communicate at the touch of the finger, we are also told that loneliness is now a global epidemic. Psychiatrists, clinical psychologists, cognitive behavioral therapists, you know, and a whole list of other mental health professionals can treat these conditions. We know how to treat these conditions. The problem is we just don't have enough professionals to do the job. It is against this background that we came up with a concept of the friendship bench. Because in essence, you have for instance, in my country, one psychiatrist out of 15 doing this work. And in, when you look at the ratio of psychiatrists to the population in low- and middle-income countries, for instance, it's one for every one million or one and a half million, which literally means that 90% of those needing evidence-based care will not get it. And this is why we came up with the idea of providing therapy on park benches. The concept of the friendship bench is rooted in the basics of cognitive behavioral therapy. Community grandmothers are trained in the basics of CBT with an emphasis on problem-solving therapy, behavior activation, and activity scheduling. And this takes a month. After a month's training, they are allocated a park bench in their community. Patients are referred to them from the clinics, from the community, from schools. And we took this package and tested it in a cluster randomized controlled trial, which is published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. And our results showed that grandmothers were effective at alleviating symptoms of depression. In fact, after six months of follow-up, people who had received therapy from a grandmother on a park bench did better than those who received therapy from a psychiatrist. <laughs> And in addition, in addition, you know, I am a psychiatrist, so I do prescribe medication. I prescribe medication. It's the nature of the job that I do. But this study also showed that these grandmothers were actually more effective than Prozac. <laughs> Just to highlight some of the findings, this graph shows you, this graph shows you the outcome of this cluster randomized controlled trial with a six-month follow-up. The blue columns indicate the baseline, and the orange columns show you the change in the outcome of depression and generalized anxiety disorders. As you can see, a huge shift in the orange column, which represents the grandmothers providing therapy, 
We went a little bit further than that, and we stratified the data by age, and we found that young people benefited just as much as older people from sitting on a park bench with a grandmother. And we looked at several outcomes, which included common mental disorders, depression, generalized anxiety disorders, and all of these measured by culturally appropriately validated screening tools. So we were excited with these findings, and we thought we need to take this to the rest of the country. Little did we know that there was interest in this model outside of Zimbabwe. Today, it's running in a number of places, including Zanzibar and New York City. In fact, in the city of New York, last year alone, I understand that more than 60,000 people received therapy from the Friendship Bench in the Bronx and in Harlem. And I am excited to be here this year because we are going to share the concept of the Friendship Bench with my colleague Sabina, who is actually leading the Friendship Bench movement here in Berlin as we begin to introduce Friendship Bench. We will be able to share with you in depth what Friendship Bench is all about. We will also be able to articulate some of the finer points of Friendship Bench. Sabina is not only passionate about the Friendship Bench, she is also passionate about creating a therapeutic environment. And that's, in essence, what the Friendship Bench is about. We create space for people to share their lived experiences, whether you are in Zimbabwe, whether you are in a tea plantation in Kenya, the effects are the same. The one thing that we found consistently with this work, whether you look at New York City, Malawi, and the different places where we have Friendship Bench, the one thing that binds us together, that is universal for human beings, is the power of stories. We all resonate with stories, and this is what the Friendship Bench is all about, bringing stories which are rooted in cognitive behavioral therapy to improve lives. <coughs> this is Grandmother Rudon. She is one of the first grandmothers to provide therapy on the Friendship Bench. A few weeks ago, she passed away. And I was honored to spend some time with Grandmother Rudo before she passed away. And I visited her in a small little house. And as I was there with her, you know, she whispered the words and said, the friendship bench has given me a sense of purpose in my community. And those words gave me profound gratitude and a sense of belonging. The United Nations tells us that in the next two decades, the population of older people will be close to two billion. Imagine if we could tap into the wisdom of the older generation across the globe you know, to really instill a sense of belonging in our communities today. This is one of the major walls we need to break. It's not just about mental health, because mental health is intricately linked to everything that we do in society. <coughs> I believe that grandmothers, not only in African culture, are the custodians of the local culture and wisdom. And I think together, we can make the world a better place by paying more attention to the role that the older populations can play as we move forward to make the world a better place for everybody. Thank you. <laughs>